live from Austin, Texas, it's theCUBE. Covering South by Southwest 2017. Brought to you by Intel. Now, here's John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live at South by Southwest at the Intel AI Lounge. This is Silicon Angles, theCUBE. Talking to some great guests. The theme for this week is AI for social good. I'm John Furrier with Silicon Angle. Our next guest is Federico Gomez Suarez, technical advisor and volunteer at Thorn, doing some really amazing things with technology uh, for the betterment of society, specifically a use case. So, Federico, welcome to theCUBE, welcome to the AI Lounge here at Intel. Thank you very much for having me. So, talk about Thorn. And you, first of all, you work for Microsoft, but you're a volunteer Correct. on a volunteer organization. Talk about what Thorn is and what you guys do. It's really yeah. a great story. So, Thorn is a nonprofit which focuses on driving technology technological innovation to fight child sexual exploitation. And it does it two ways. One of them is by doing research to find you know, the new trends and the new ways that this is happening, but also by using the latest technology to find ways that we can actually find this problem. Uh, Thorn has something called the Innovation Lab, where we're always trying new technology, we're trying AI, just to find new ways to find the, pro find the problem. So this is really a great uh, use case of where technology is being used for the betterment of, of society and good, because what you're doing is taking really cutting edge, big data, machine learning, yeah. AI techniques, and the rage right now is facial recognition. Oh yes. So talk about where, and how it works, and, when, and, and, when, and what's the results, and can you share some of the impact? Yeah, so um, as part of my volunteer work, one of the projects I have been working is called the Child Finder Service. Um, and the idea of this work is, if we have an image, particularly an image of a child who have been missing, can we use facial recognition uh, to determine whether another image is the same child? And this is actually a pretty challenging problem because the child may have gone missing uh, many years back, and now we want to match against another picture uh, where the child may show much uh, growth, much growth. Depending on the duration, right? And you know, if you imagine the impact of actually having this technology, you know, a person who is trying to look for a missing child, if they have to go through a lot of pictures, it's actually hard to determine whether two people are the same, are, is the same person or not. So we're helping in that case. We're helping so that you, know, you don't have to go through so many pictures so that we can highlight the ones that the machine thinks is actually the same person. Take us through how it works and just a use case, just as, a, as an illustration. Yeah, so when a child goes missing, um, the National Center for Missing Children, which uh, we, we work with, uh, they publish a poster, and that poster has an image of a missing child. Now, once you have that image, uh, you may want to say, well, can, are there places where the image, picture of that child may be showing up? Um, you know, one place that there's usually pictures of, child, of children uh, being exploited are online ads. So let's say that there's online ads, and you want to say, well, in any of these ads that they're used for, uh, uh, you know, exploitation, could, could there be the same child in both of them? Um, so that's actually a use case. And just using face recognition technology, we can try to make that problem uh, easier or faster than it would be if you were trying to do it manually. And you're doing a demo here in the Intel AI Lounge. What's in the demo? What are you showing? So in the demo, I'm showing how difficult it really is to do face recognition by hand, and how by just having some assistance from a machine, you can go from, you know, having to look at hundreds of images and spending potentially hours to doing it in seconds. So how did you get involved? I mean, this is a volunteer organization. Take us through your journey. Yeah. How did you get involved? And, and talk about how you guys are um, getting more people involved and how yes. can someone get involved? Absolutely. So, you know, um, as part of Microsoft, there is the Hack for Good community. And they encourage us to go and donate our time, our skill to nonprofits. And that's, you know, Two years ago, I, was, I had this idea, and I, I did a hackathon, and after the hackathon, I got connected with Thorn. I learned about what they do, and you know, that's how I pretty much got involved. Um, I was really fortunate that Microsoft supported me to actually go spend time with a nonprofit, and when I started working with Thorn, I realized, hey, there's other tech companies also willing to help. So in this Child Finder Service project, I work with Intel, I work with uh, other companies, all coming together to find ways to solve this problem using the cutting edge technology available. And you know, if Thorn is always looking for volunteers, we're looking for what we call our tech defenders. Yep. Um, if, if you go to our website, which is wearethorn.org, yep. WAC, 
SXSW, yeah. uh, you'll find a link where you can actually volunteer your skills as a technical defender for Thorn. So talk about, so that's very cool by the way, for, people should check out Thorn, is there a website, Thorn? Yeah, 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 it's wearethorn.org, WAC SXSW. Okay, wearethorn.org slash SXSW for South by Southwest. Okay. Yes. So talk about the technology, because obviously Intel makes chips, makes stuff go faster, you got more compute, you got more cores, you got now cloud technology, and you're seeing at Google Next where they were showcasing their Xeon processor, the, the AI trend now is becoming really, really, really big. I know uh, Microsoft Azure, Amazon uh, Web Services, they're all having these machine learning libraries, mm -hmm. and the big trend is self-learning machines or deep learning. So this is a tech trend, but now when you apply it to this, yeah. um, it really can work. So what is some of the technology and what are some of the data sets that you use? How does it work under the covers? Yeah, so we actually start with an open source technology. Um, for you know, for face recognition, and you know, after, you know, this was uh, after we started with this uh, with this technology, we realized that we had to make it better. So we had to build data sets ourselves. You know, for the data sets we have, you know, images of the posters that are published for the National Center. Uh, we have also started asking people to donate images, um, you know, over time uh, of themselves because we need images of people when they're children or when they're older. And you know, that's how we'll be building data sets. And then having the data set, we need to go and train them. And that's where using hardware, and particularly using GPUs to actually do training really is key for us. Um, you know, the technology really under this is deep learning yep. for us. We use using existing deep learning models and improving them with, the, uh, with our particular scenario. Because there are special challenges in our case, not only with the age, but also a lot of the images that we process um, Sometimes there's heavy makeup, sometimes there's things like that. Or res resolution, right? Depending on the, um, the photo. Yeah, right? and you know, low resolution images particularly, they're, they're a challenge, so we need, to, we need to improve it, we need to keep training to actually get to the point where we feel we have a really robust I want to ask you a personal question, and this is something we were talking about on our intro segment, and something that I've been thinking a lot about. I haven't written about it yet, but I'm going, I've, I've been starting to tease it out on some of my um, thought leader interviews, is that in every major inflection point in the business of technology, there's always been a counterculture movement. And it seems to be that if you look at all the news, whether it's political or tech company news and all the stuff happening around the world, it seems to be a social good culture developing. Yeah. You're seeing a counterculture where what was once valued, you know, tech or public proprietary algorithms is now changing to open source, community, societal benefits. There seems to be a lot of activity and no one's kind of put their finger on it. And this, you're a great use case of that example. And, and I, I see like, you know, the Hack for Good community Microsoft is growing. And you know, there's people, peers of mine working on all these kind of interesting projects, helping nonprofits. And, and that's called Hack for Good? Yes. Community, what's it called? Hack for Good in Microsoft. So, so that's a Microsoft hackathon with employees yeah. who just say, hey, let's pick a, something good to do and they apply their programming technical skills to... Yeah, and you know, there's a lot of support and we're encouraged to do it and it's, for, to me it's inspiring to work in a company that really encouraged that. Yeah. And you know what, I see the same when I look across the industry. Yeah. I see people willing to, you know, spend their evenings, like I spend my evenings working on, on some of this or weekends, but we're passionate about making a difference and I, I know I'm not alone, I met a lot of people and I know there's a lot more out there. Is there a community people can check out? Is it on the website? Is there open source community? Is there certain software you know, groups that are playing uh, more than others? Or Actually, I don't, I don't know. I know in my space, you know, I think a great place to start is joining Thorns uh, Digital Defenders. Uh, but you know, I would say if someone is passionate about a cause, you know, it could be anything, you know, and say, I want to help, there's non-profits out there for that. And you know, when I work with non-profits, they, they're, they're so passionate about it and sometimes they just need help, you know, just in little things and having someone in the tech community go in and help them makes a huge difference. So I would invite people to just go, you know, if you're passionate about it, just go for it. Find a nonprofit, they'll be happy to work with you. Frederico, I want to ask you um, if you could share just some anecdotal impact that you guys have had. Can you share uh, some, some successes, some yeah. advances? And 
just to highlight some of the things? Yeah, so uh, Thorn just published their, uh, their yearly report, and uh, it was really encouraging. So Thorn has a couple of different tools that they build. One of them is called Spotlight. Uh, through the use of this tool last year, uh, about 2,000 children who were victims of trafficking were recovered mm -hmm. and, uh, ar from around 6,000 victims. And you know, each victim is a person. And the fact that you know, we're making the difference in those lives is extremely encouraging. Uh, and that's just one of the things that we were able to, to uh, contribute. Um, so you know, that's one of the stories that we have. And, and to me, it's not only that. To me, to me, it's also the fact that I see people who are willing to actually get engaged, learn more about this problem. It's another huge win. Final question for you, um, Federico. Describe the scene here at the AI Lounge at Intel. What's, for folks watching who aren't at South by Southwest, what is the vibe here? What are they showing? Obviously, AI is the theme. AI for social goods are broadcast here. Uh, hashtag is Intel AI if you're interested in sharing. We'd be appreciated if you could retweet and share the, the love. What's your thoughts on with the vibe here? Describe the scene here. You know, when I look around, all the demos are amazing. Like, each one of them, you're blown away by it. And it's, it just shows you how, in a practical way, AI can be changing lives or doing thing, amazing things. The, there's the drones there and the video of the drones, and I love those. They look amazing. And then there's also the, the demo around, you know, using an art style and getting your yeah. picture, and I, I'm going to get mine in a second. I think if you come by, you know, you'll see how AI really in practice uh, is it's able to just contribute to people's lives. Uh, so, and, and the vibe is awesome, I, and I'm loving it here. Well, I want to say congratulations. You do amazing things. It's Thank really um, a real testament to where the society's going. AI for social change, Microsoft has a hackathon for good, and this is a, not a one-off. I mean, Microsoft certainly has had that. Google's got the 20% work on your own project. Intel has it. Companies are getting involved. A counterculture is developing for societal benefits, and all these new things happening, like autonomous vehicles, smart cities, these are paradigm-shifting society changes around the world and will require human involvement. Congratulations and thanks for sharing. Thank you very much, and we have a hashtag just for our project, which is hashtag defend happiness. Defend happiness? Yeah, which is all about stopping uh, you know, sexual exploitation and trafficking all around the world. Okay, hashtag defend happiness. Please put it out there and share it. Tweet this video and for the betterment of society. I'm John Furrier with Federico here at the Intel AI Lounge. More coverage from South by Southwest. Three days of coverage, full day cube today, some interviews tomorrow. Intel has some amazing super demos they're going to be showing here throughout the weekend. Stay tuned on theCUBE, we'll be covering it. We'll be right back with more after the short break.